Annapolis, Maryland on the Chesapeake Bay. The small 27-footer was hard to spot, sailing in the middle of an admiring fleet of welcoming boats. Her young skipper, Matt Rutherford, 31, had just completed a non-stop, 314-day, 27,000-mile solo circumnavigation of North and South America. The first such solo voyage ever in a small sailboat. His sloop, St. Brendan, named after a 6th century explorer, is a 36-year-old Swedish-built Albin Vega. This work, Matt. A sturdy vessel, but not one designed for the rigors of the Northwest Passage in Cape Horn. Rutherford had actually crossed his own start line at the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel near Norfolk, Virginia. But he was determined not to step foot on land until he sailed up the bay to his home port of Annapolis. The reason for the voyage? Personal accomplishment, but more important to Matt, support of CRAB, Chesapeake Region Accessible Boating, a nonprofit that provides the joy and challenge of sailing to individuals with disabilities. Matt's goal was to raise $250,000 for CRAB, $10 for every mile of his record-setting circumnavigation of the Americas. With $80,000 raised to date and more pledges coming in with his successful return, Matt is committed to translating his personal triumph into financial support for CRAB and disabled sailors. Are you ready to officially welcome our hero, Matt Rutherford? Well, I hope you uh, realize the governor worked very hard to have absolutely perfect weather, nice southerly breeze for you to come in. Good job. So uh, how does it feel to be on land? Are you rocking a little bit? Uh, no, you know, it's uh, fine. I, I, I'm a very lucky guy when it comes to seasickness and motion sickness, and I can deal with it all. So how was it going around Cape Horn? Uh, Cape Horn is beautiful, by the way. Uh, it's... There is a particular time, and if you, can, if you can get there within the first two weeks of January, you have the most likely chance of not being hit by a crazy storm. Although I had many a storms before and after, the day that I went around the horn was a beautiful day with rainbows and everything you'd imagine. Yes. All right, so you've completed this circumnavigation of the Americas, very strong feet, cheering for you all the way. My big question, what's next? I need to get a haircut. You guys see this going on? Oh, well, I'd like to go back up to the Arctic and do another trip through. Uh, there's kind of one chapter that is yet to be written in the Northwest Passage, and uh, so I'd like to uh, complete that passage. But, yeah, that's the idea, to head back up there and shoot a documentary, too. Thank you, Matt. Is that just just down there? Thank you, Matt. Thank Help, as far as helping out crab, what's that mean to you personally? Uh, well, I enjoy, I like nonprofit work in general, and I, should, you know, I think that everybody should get out there and you know, turn off the television and go do some, a little bit of volunteer work every month, and they can make a big difference if, if we all kind of got together and did it. <laughs> what was the hardest part of it, or the most dangerous? Uh, the hardest part was Baffin Bay, Northwest Passage. The combination of ice and fog is incredibly dangerous, uh, as you can imagine. So there were times, I very, very close near misses I had where icebergs coming out of the fog at the last second. I got no radar on this boat. So, you know, in storms and you mix it all together. So yeah, I, I was nearly killed by a giant iceberg at one point.